Good morning, everyone that's here and everyone that's online. Let's give the Lord our Savior, our King, the Creator of the universe, the honor that He deserves. If He saved you, if He set you free, come on. He met you in your darkest moment when everybody else gave up on you and He was there. Come on, give God the praise that He deserves, the one that died for you, resurrected from the dead. You know, life can be sobering. That means that that things can turn from bad to or good to bad, and, like in a moment. And just when you think you got everything under control, then just you get a curveball out of this world, and you say, "Man, what happened?" But there's a God that can help you through all that. He's bigger than any trouble that you're dealing with today. He's bigger than the cancer. He's bigger than the losses. He's bigger than. He's bigger than death. He's bigger than your failures. He's bigger than your heartbreak. Come on. He's bigger than an addiction. He's bigger. Come on. He's bigger than, than the spirit of rebellion that are taking your kids away from God. God is saying, I'm bigger than anything that you're facing. I'm bigger than your struggles. Come on. I'm bigger. I'm bigger than the cycles that you've been in. You're saying, I seem like I can't get out of it. And God is the one that is saying, I'll set you free. I'm the Lord of the breakthrough. I'm the resurrection. I'm I'm the life. I'm the creator of the universe. I'm the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. I'm the king of the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. And I'm not just saying this stuff. What I'm saying is the power to change your life is here. And as I'm saying that, some of you right now need some change in your life. And there's things that you can change and there's things that you can't change. But this is what you can't do, is make a decision, today's my day to change. Now God will take a decision and empower that decision you naturally make a decision and God supernaturally empowers you to transform your life. Someone has to make up their mind today that today is my day of change. Today my family's gonna change. Today my, come on, my emotions are gonna change. Today my cycles are gonna change. Today my future's gonna change. Today my children are gonna change. And if you don't make that decision, nothing changes. You cannot be a victim of life. You know, there's one thing you have the power of. You don't have the power to control everything that happens to you. But you have a power to make a decision how you react. And you have the power. This is, this is a, a great power you have. And it's the power of choice. And today you can make a choice. And you're going to be given a choice of making a decision. Today I'm not just coming to church. And even if someone brought you here, it's a miracle that you're here today. Now, realistically, I guarantee you at the beginning of the year, you didn't think you'd be at church on Sunday. But someone kept inviting you, and they kept inviting you, and they kept inviting you. And this is just the perfect storm in your life for God to show up in the middle of your storm and saying, I know you're struggling, but I'm here to help you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to save you. Come on. Let's give God some praise. There's going to be some saving going on. There's going to be some freedom going on. There's going to be a new beginning happening. Let's not wait for Easter to experience some resurrection. Why don't we go ahead and have a pre-service, come on, a pre-Easter service today, that today becomes a day of victory to, for you. I tell you guys, God loves you and we love you. This life is very, very short. I'm gonna get ready to, we're gonna study the Bible and the word of God is different. Like, this is not a word of man, it's a word of God. Hearing the word of God is hearing from God. And one word of God can change your life forever. The word of God feeds your soul. Everything, you got things to feed your mind, feed your body. But the word of God feeds your soul. So when we come to church, we don't come here to just say a whole bunch of cliches and, and me tell you some really good stories to make you entertain. We're studying the Bible. And I want you to know God better than you knew him before you came in here. And I pray as you're hearing the word of God that you have an encounter with God and your life will be changed forever. There's such thing as you becoming a brand new person. 
there's such thing as God, you opening your heart and saying yes to God, that he fills you with his spirit and you become a brand new person. And when you get filled with the spirit, you get his supernatural power. You get a supernatural strength that when you couldn't change, he begins to change you, changes your desires. You come the way you are, but he does a miracle inside of you. And when he, when he does that miracle inside of you, you'll be, you'll say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, something happened that service. I am not the same person. That's called a miracle. This life on earth is very short. Very, very short. And be careful. That you're not involved in just this life. Make sure you're prepared your spiritual life and you're prepared for the next life. You know, today I just got, I just got a text from Pastor Dan from The Rock. And last night, Pastor Jim Cobray passed away. And he's, a, he's one of the generals of our, this inland, in the valley. And, and he's put a lot of work in. And I spent a lot of time with, with Jim before we started the church. I, I had some meeting with him, went to lunch with him. But he's a truly a man of God that has a wonderful legacy. And he's passed on, but I want, I'm going to pray before we get into the word. But we want to pray for the Rock Church today. Their father, their leader, their pastor, and really a general of the faith in this whole inland empire has moved on into glory. Now, I, I talked to, I just texted Dan. I go, is it true? And he said, yeah, it's true. He goes, but he passed away last night. And he said this, peacefully with a smile on his face. And he had a smile on his face. And I believe this, because he had peace with God. How many understand that? That's going to be, now that will be our story one day. And I've heard people die with torment on their face. As they're going on to eternity, they're screaming. Because they're going into agony. But when a believer passes... Because he's made peace with God, he's going into his final home, a place where there's no sickness, a place where there's no pain, a place where there's no death, a place where there's no violence, a place where there's no division and prejudice and all the crazy stuff we got going on here. Um, he's done his part, and it was time for him to go home. But the baton's been passed on to the rock and passed on to churches like us, and we're going to continue as long as we're here. We're going to continue that mission of reaching one more soul for Jesus. Because Jesus loves every single person in this room, every person in our valley, every person in this world. And how will, how will they know how much God loves them unless we're here to let them know? And, and we're going to be talking a little bit. I'm going to pray. But today we're going to be talking about what God thinks about you. And I, I don't think we think about that too much. But you're going to hear a word today that's going to... That, that describes what he thinks about you that you probably never thought about. And it's, gonna, it's a word that you say, man, does he really think that way about me? He does. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. And I thank you for every person that's here, everyone that's watching online, all of our churches, the way Pomona, the way Arrowhead, Father, the way Oregon, the way TJ, the way Kenya, the way Oregon, Father, the way Tijuana, Mexico, the hundred some churches in Uganda. And we also pray for our brothers and sisters, the rock. And we pray, Father God, for that congregation, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll comfort it in this time. And that, Father, yes, yes, of course, this is, uh, they're going to miss Pastor Jim for sure. But they will not miss the messages and, and the words that he's spoken to them. And that they would honor Pastor Jim Cobray by saving more souls and reaching more people than they've ever reached. That this would be a new start for the rock, a new beginning for the rock, a new fire for the rock, a new revival for the rock. That their best days weren't behind them with Jim, but their best days are ahead of them, Father, as they, Father, receive the mantle. We're believing for that. We want the rock to grow and every seat filled and we want your kingdom full and they're our brothers and sisters and we love them and we thank you, Lord, that we're able to pray with them and, and honor them and bless them and pray your comfort over them. Bless us as we study the word, that we'll hear your word and we'll get your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The title of this message is God is obsessed with us. Now that word obsessed 
you probably have never heard it with God attached to it with you. But that word obsessed, this is what it means. It's the domination of one's thoughts or feelings by a persistent idea, image, or desire. It's dominated, it's, it's a thought that's dominating your thoughts and your emotions. When God thinks about you, he, he consistently, that's the highest dominating thought that he has. You'll never succeed in anything that you're not obsessed with. So many of us want to succeed, but we're not obsessed with the idea. And because you're not obsessed, you can't succeed in something that you're not obsessed with. And God is obsessed with you. He wants a relationship with every single person in this room. He's not obsessed with an idea to judge you, to hurt you, to punish you. But he's obsessed to have a relationship with you, to save you, to set you free, and fill your life with his goodness. Obsession. This is what the Bible says about God's thoughts towards you. God is constantly thinking about us. Look at Psalms 139, 17. How precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. Well, God, David, the one that killed Goliath, came to a realization, he's realizing something, that even though people have abandoned him, people have walked out of him, there's people that have hated him, there's people that have backstabbed him, there's people that have abused him, but he realized something. There's a God that created the heavens and the earth. Everybody about me might be against me, but there's a God that's obsessed with me. He's obsessed with me even though he knows the failures that I've done. He knows the sins that I've committed. He knows the life that I'm living right now. And it doesn't stop his obsession with you. He loves you. He's thinking about you. And his plans are for good. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he goes, I know the thoughts that I have for you. They're thoughts for good. They're thoughts for peace. Their thoughts for prosperity. Their thoughts, their, their thoughts for victory. Their thoughts for hope. And he looks at us and he's saying, man, if you would just realize how much I love you. I see your pain. I see your hurt. I see the depression. I see the fear. And if you only knew, if you just turned my way, I could heal you. I could set you free. I could give you a brand new life. I could turn your life around. I could turn your defeat into victory. You're one turn away. And Psalms, look what it says right here. Like verse, um, the, the, the same verse. I can't even count. This is what David says. How many times a day your thoughts turn towards me? And when I'm awake, when I awaken in the morning, you are still thinking about me. That's, that, you might be thinking, man, David's like, I mean, seems like he's a little, like, really prideful. He's not prideful. He's aware. And God is, and I don't think we're aware. You might not know who God is, but God knows who you are. And you know what's crazy about God? He knows you better than your mama. He knows you better than your husband and wife. He knows you better than you know yourself. You don't know how to fix you, but he knows how to fix you. Come on. You don't know what's wrong with you, but he knows what's wrong with you. You don't know how to fill that emptiness in your life, but God knows how to fill that emptiness in life. You don't know what purpose is, and God says, I have a purpose for you. But let's look at this. God knows us so well and he's obsessed with us to the point that he even has the hairs on our head numbered. Now, that's, that's an obsession. Luke 12, 7. Yes, God even knows how many hairs you have on your head. So don't be afraid. Do you know why we're fearful? Because we're scared about our future. We're thinking, man, my future, it's, it could be, it could, it's, it's probably not going to work out. And you're looking at your future with dread, and I'll tell you why. You don't even know who, how much God loves you, and you don't know how much God wants to help you, and you don't know how much God wants to provide for you, and you don't know how much, who is actually for you. God is saying, stop being afraid. I know you so well. I, I know how many hairs you got. 
That's crazy. And you know what that means? He also knows your problems. Matter, the scripture says, I know what you need before you ask. But you know why we don't get the help? It's not because there's not help. We're not aware how much he loves us. Some of you think that you don't deserve a miracle. And God says, stop trying to earn it. I love you and I want to bless you and I want to help you. Why don't we go ahead and just receive, come on, the love of God, the plans of God. And it can start right now. Now God is also obsessed with seeking and saving us. He wants to help us. He sent his son in Luke 19, 10 with a mission. And that's to seek and save us. And Luke 19, 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus came with one mission. To seek, look after, aim after. The word seek also means to think and it's meditating. He's assessed. He's dominated with this thought. I just want to save those who are lost. That word lost means those who are separated from me. Those that are experiencing the misery of the bad decisions that they're making. Those that are experiencing the addiction of trying to medicate that pain. Those who are depressed. Those who are lonely. Those that have been abused. Those who, who see no hope. Those who are suicidal. Those who are in a self-destructive lifestyle. Those that everything they've touched has turned to a mess. And if that's you, God's not here to bring up your past. He's just letting you know, I can save you. I know you're lost and you don't know your way back home, but I'm here to let you know, I'll meet you right where you're at. You don't even have to come to me. I'm coming to you today. Isn't it great that it wasn't that you were seeking God, it's that God was seeking after you. There is no coincidence this moment there's a God that loves you and obsessed with you, and he brought you in this room to give you salvation, to give you a new start, to make you whole, to heal you, to give you eternal life, to save you from the judgment and the consequences of sin. Today's your day to have a brand new start. Today's your day to be saved. Today's your day to be set free. Today's your day to get restored. Today's your day to get your peace. Today's the day to get your joy back. Today's the day to get hope back. Today's your day for your new beginning. And Jesus saying, I'm here. It's no coincidence. Listen to the pastor. He's speaking to you. Come on. He's, I'm speaking through him. But listen. Today's your day. Well, pastor, I'm messed up. Who cares? Everybody's messed up. But he wants to save you. You know, I've been obsessed, you know, with things, and maybe you've been obsessed with things, and maybe you have an obsession today. There's a thought that's dominating your life, but it's not a right thought. You could be obsessed with hate or unforgiveness. You could be in this room hating someone that hurts you, and you, go to, you wake up in the morning, and you just can't stop thinking about that person that hurt you. Some of us are waking up with vengeance on our hearts. Man, I can't wait to see them again. Because when I see them again, I will cuss them out. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, I might be a Christian, but don't you mess with me. You're obsessed. Some of us are obsessed with an idea or a person. You're thinking, man, if they come back into my life, they left you. But if they come back into my life, my life will be whole. And God's saying, no, your life won't be whole. Your life wasn't whole with them, and your life won't be whole when they come back. The only thing that's going to make you whole is you're going to have to get a better obsession than that. You must become obsessed with your purpose and be obsessed with me. And God wants to pass on his obsession, which is an obsession, at least a satisfaction. Obsessed. Could you be obsessed with your career, obsessed with your money? All these things can destroy your life and take you away and leave you absolutely empty. But there's an obsession that you can have in your life, and it's the right obsession. Give your life to Jesus. Be obsessed with living for him. And to be obsessed with the mission that he has to reach somebody else. And I guarantee you, finally you're going to have some contentment. Finally you're going to have some peace. Finally you're going to find your purpose. Finally you're going to have some joy. It could happen today. I think I've been obsessed with my wife. I've been dominated. I remember one time I was seeking and trying, I was seeking a lost sheep. This is what happened. I, I broke up with her like 20 times. 
before we got married. Not after we got married, before we got married. Just clear it up. <laughs> and this was a pattern. Every time I was so insecure, I'd break up with her and then she'd just come back crying. And then I'd say, it's all right, we're back together. <laughs> like I wanted to feed my ego. I'm so loved, she comes crying back to me, it's all right. I bless you. <laughs> but then there was a day I broke up with her and she didn't come back. She realized she didn't need me. She, she had a greater relationship with God. I was like, I go, there's something wrong here. My obsession kicked in. Literally, I began to look for her all over the streets. I started calling her and she wasn't even answering me. I thought she got kidnapped. <laughs> I went over to my cousin's house. I go, there's something wrong. Lisa, Lisa is gone. She hasn't come back. I've been trying to text her. She's nowhere to be found. We got to call the police. And I wasn't lying. I go, we got to go to the police right now. Something happened to Lisa. So I went over, all over the streets of Rialto looking for Lisa. I, got, I lost my girlfriend. <laughs> I realized how valuable she was to me. And I started searching for her. Nowhere to be found. I was searching for her to 12 o'clock midnight. She came home. I was parked in front of her house with my cousin. She came home at 12 o'clock midnight smiling and laughing like she was partying. <laughs> smiling without me. How can you be happy without me? I thought I was the love of your life. I thought you said, oh, was that forever? I thought you said I made you whole. She came home. I go, where were you? She goes, I don't have to answer you. I mean, T, we're not boy you're not my boyfriend. I thought you broke up with me. I go, no, 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 we're, that, that's over. We're boyfriend, girlfriend again. I go, where were you? She goes, I just went to church in L.A. I went to some revival. We just had a great old time. I go, I go, okay, okay, let's not do that ever again. She, I go, will you accept me back? She goes, I'll accept you back. Okay, but, but understand this. I don't need you. I got God. And I tell, I, I, from that point on, I'm telling you, that obsession went a little bit higher because I don't want to ever lose her again. Come on, there's some good obsessions in your life. You should be obsessed, come on, with reaching your family. You should be obsessed, come on, come on, you should be obsessed with making sure that your family, come on, knows Jesus Christ. You should be obsessed with your husband and your wife in a good way. So that happened. Praise the Lord. She came back, hallelujah. <laughs> but God is obsessed with you in a good way. He can't see a future without you. And he wants you to really look at this. He don't want you to ever think that you could have a future without him. And that's why sometimes the best thing in our lives that ever happened is we got our heart broken. And I, I'm not saying that it's good that your heart is broken, but maybe it's good that your heart is broken because you realize that you need something bigger than that relationship. And that relationship, he's the only one that can heal your life. He's the only one that can make you whole. I know it's a bad financial thing to happen to you, but thank God you no longer are obsessed with your money and your career. You realize that failed you, but there's a God that will meet you in your lowest moment, not to leave you there, but to lift you up and restore you it's not that God doesn't want you to have things but he don't want things to become your obsession so now there's a story in the Bible about about this obsession and it describes Jesus obsession with us and it's in Luke chapter 15 verse 1 and let's look at this it's a story of, uh, of Jesus told a story of describing how important you are and it's a story about a shepherd that lost one sheep, and what does he do? He has a hundred sheep, but then there's one sheep that's gone, so what does he do? Does he write off that one and say, well, I still got 99, or is he obsessed with not the whole group, but is he obsessed with the one, the individual, you? It's easy to think that God loves the world 
and he's, a, he, he's thinking about the world, but he's not thinking about the world. He's thinking about you. And he's obsessed with you. And when you're lost and you're broken and you're hurting, he's saying, I want to bring you back home. I want you to be with me. I want you to be me be so bad that I send my only son to die for every sin that you've ever committed. I love you. I've given my life for you. And I want you to be with me and I'll forgive you and I'll set you free. And I'll give you eternal life and me and you can be reconciled. That's how much God loves you. See, he tells a story about this. In Luke chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was always associating with such sinful people, even eating with them, like, ew. What they were complaining about is that he was hanging out with sinners. When you're obsessed, like God is obsessed, this is what he's saying. I will hang out and I'll do everything to be with those I'm obsessed with. When you're obsessed with someone, you want to be with them. Who was Jesus hanging around with? The people he was trying to reach. He wasn't hanging around a whole bunch of goody two-shoes people. He was hanging around some notorious sinners. He was hanging around some, with some people that had a reputation. He was hanging around some people that nobody wanted to hang around. He was hanging around with some people that nobody wanted to have a relationship with. And God says, they might reject you. Even churches might reject you. But I don't reject you. I want a relationship with you. And they were complaining that God was hanging around sinners. Now, we need to get that passion back. We got to be careful that we're not so churchy we're so churchified that we forgot where we came from and you understand what God saved you. He didn't save you just hanging around Christians. He saved you to go back and reach your family. Go back and reach your friends. Go back, come on, and go back to your hood and let them know that Jesus has saved me when I was lost. He can save you too. He was eating with them. You know what that means? He was intentionally spending time with them. When was the last time you invited a sinner over to dinner? It sounds like a rap. When was the last time you invited a sinner over to dinner? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, we could invite sinners over? <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought evil company crossed good morals. <laughs> Now, I understand that. Evil company corrupts good morals and it means is that you're participating in sin with them. We're not going to get a bowl of weed and smoke weed with them. We're not going to get faded with them and get 12 six-packs and let's just, come on, let's chop it up. No, you're going to invite them to dinner with intention. You're going to let them know I love you, I want you in my life, but and then you're going to sneak Jesus in. Come on, you're going to sneak the answer in. You're going to tell them about the one that saved you. You're going to start telling them your testimony. They're going to start wondering what happened to you. And you're going to let them, I'm going to let you know what happened. I had an addiction for 20 years. I was a heroin addict for 40 years. But God met me in my darkest moment when everybody else gave up. And he saved me. He set me free. Look at the smile on my face. It's real. And they're going to tell them. And then you will invite them to church. Some of us will go golfing for a business motive. Let's go golfing so we could close the deal. Let's go to lunch so we could talk about the deal. And there's things that you'll do to go out of your way to get something you want. But when was the last time you went out of your way in a conversation? You went out of your way and you visited someone that was sick. You went out of your way and invited someone into your life that doesn't know Jesus. And the reason you did it is because you're obsessed with them getting saved, with them getting delivered, with them getting, come on, they're lost and they need God. I pray that our church gets that obsession. 
I don't want our church to ever get so churchified we can't even talk to sinners. Sinners should not be feel like, they should not feel awkward around you. This is how they should feel. They should feel finally someone hears me. Finally someone understands me. I love hanging around sinners, like in, not doing what they do, but I love hanging around sinners. I, I, love, I, love talk, I, I love talking to them. And, well, what if they cuss? I could care less. Stop being so Christian that you're trying, to, you're trying to correct them. and Stop correcting them. Let's get them to Jesus. He's the Savior. He's the deliver, deliverer. He didn't make you the Holy Ghost police. I'm keeping order around here. No one cussing around my jurisdiction, buddy. I'm the Holy Ghost Sheriff. We're going to clean up this language around here. No smoking weed, buddy. Stop drinking. Oh, not around me, buddy. You got the wrong guy. I go to the weird world outreach. I am sanctified, holy, full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> can, I, can I get an amen, brother? Get all that church and ease out of your life. Come on, stop acting like you weren't the one drunk, and that you weren't the one high, you weren't the one shooting up, you weren't the adulterer. Come on, you weren't the liar, you weren't the thief, you weren't the prostitute. Come on, baby. Come on, son. Come on, brother. Come on, carnal. I was there where you were. You know me. You know how I was just like you. Let me tell you my story. I tried every year to change my life. Every weekend, I came back and said sorry to my family, but nothing changed. But there was a day that I went to church, and I found out that there was a God obsessed with me that wanted to save me. I said yes, and he transformed my life. Come on, tell them your Jesus story. We got to get back to that. When was the last time we got to like, bring somebody to church? I tell you, this is a great church to bring somebody to. Because I tell you right now, there's someone just got brought, and they're like, man, he's speaking to me. <laughs> Did you tell him? But you know what this is about? The reason you feel like God's speaking to you? Because he's speaking to every one of us. Come on, we're all the same. We're all hurting. We all need to be saved. Come on, we all need to be whole. We're all empty without God. We're all depressed. Come on, we're all crazy. So they're complaining, he's hanging around sinners. Like, religious people, get out of my way. We're gonna reach some sinners. We're going to go to their hood. Come on. Come on. They're gonna, we're going to go to their house while they're playing the oldies. I don't care what you're playing. You could be playing ACDC and worshiping the devil, but when the light of Jesus comes in, it's going to take over the atmosphere. Stop being intimidated by the devil and start going in there and start shining light and take over the territory. Let them know right there where God loves them. So now Jesus hears these religious freaks. I can't believe he's hanging around all these sinners and associating with them. We would never, never do that. And Jesus is cool because he overhears what they're saying. So Jesus is aware of what's going on. He's, he's partying with the sinners, talking about life and eternal life and new beginnings. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. I know what's going on, man. I, well, I see your heartbreak, man. We're going to deal with that. I see your sickness. I can heal that too. I know your marriage is on the rocks, but we can fix that and put it on the solid rock. It's going to be all right. So all these conversations are happening uh, as, as, he's, as he's working the audience and he's talking to them. See, I know what you're going through right now. I know you just lost your job and you have financial problems, but I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I'll tell you, I'm the Jehovah. Over Jireh, your provider, and I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. It's gonna be okay. I know you come on, I know what you're going through. So all these conversations are happening. But while all these conversations are happening, he hears the haters that are trying to stop him from getting to his mission. And this is what Jesus starts. He goes, I love this. So Jesus told them the story, these religious people. If a man has a hundred sheep. And one of them gets lost. They said, well, what's the sheep? You're the sheep. You're the one that got lost. So one got lost. What will he do? 
There's somebody that right now, you're lost. You backslid. It's time for you to come home. You're in a lost category. It's time to get back. You lost your way. You got offended. You ran away from your call. You got distracted by an affair. An addiction took you in. It keeps taking you away. You're hurting. You're hurting people around you. And God's not here to put you down. He's here to let you know, you can't fix that, but I can. You're the lost sheep I'm after. So what did he do? This is what he answers. Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Won't he leave the 99 and go search for the one See, God's not interested in the crowd. He's interested in you. And I'm telling you, he knows everything about you, and he wants you. He loves you. And he's your answer. So he starts searching, and he knows this. Sheep have a tendency to stray. And sheep can never come back. They don't know how to get back. They're not like a dog. I had a dog... His name was Rocket. He died, but there he is right there. One day I was walking with Rocket. It was a hot summer day. And we're walking. And I'm, in, I'm like, like in the mountains. And then I turned back all of a sudden. I thought he was following me. He's gone. So I'm looking all over the mountains for my dog, Rocket. We love Rocket. We don't want Rocket to, to, to get lost. So like 20 minutes later, I call Lisa. I go, Lisa, I got some bad news for you. Rocket got lost up here in the mountains. I don't know where he's at. I'm searching for him. And you know what? When she, she goes outside. She opens the door. Rocket's at the door. <laughs> and she goes, I just opened the door. Rocket's here. Don't worry about it. He came back home. See, a dog knows how to come back home. But a sheep don't know how to come back home. That means if someone doesn't rescue that sheep, it's going to be eaten by the wolves. It's going to be eaten. And it doesn't defend itself. It doesn't know how to get back. And what God is saying, you don't know how to get back. You don't know how to fix your life. But there's a shepherd that loves you. And I'm searching for you. And I brought you here to fix what you can't fix. And get you back where you're supposed to be. Come on, give God some praise that there's a shepherd searching for you. He's searching. Where's the sheep? I won't go back home until I find the sheep. Where is the sheep? <laughs> we got to find the sheep. I'm not going to give up until I find that sheep. Wait a second. There's the sheep right there. Ha. There she is. I've been, I've been looking for her. Because if, if I didn't come get her, she was going to die. There was a wolf looking for her, but there was a shepherd looking for her. Now you're not going to have this one. I got 99, but every one of them are coming home. Come on, this is you. This is how helpless you are. Come on, this is how, how defenseless you are. If you don't have a shepherd to take care of you, if you don't have a shepherd to protect you, you're going to be lost out there. But thank God, God didn't write you off when everybody else wrote you off. Thank God there was a God that was seeking for the lost sheep. He didn't give up till he found it. And God's not giving up on you. Poor baby. But I got to bring him back home. The Bible says when he finds the sheep, he puts it on his shoulders and he brings him back home. What he's saying is, once I save you, I've begun a good work in you. And once we get him saved, come on, the work just begun. You got to take those, come on, save sinners. And you're going to have to put them on your shoulders and say, come on, let's go to church together. Come on, let's, come on, let's serve God together. Let's go to Holy Wars together. Come to my discipleship class. Let's study the Bible together. Once you save them, now you go into responsibility. See, this thing's trying to buck itself, but it doesn't know. I'm a shepherd. I'm not letting them go. You can fight all you want. Come on, some of you are just like that. You're, you're bucking, and God says, I got a hold of you. And the work I started in you, I'm going to finish. I'm not giving up on you. I know you're bucking. I 
tight on your bucket. Come on, God's bigger than your problems. God's bigger than your demons. God's bigger than your past. God's bigger than your addiction. There's somebody that believes in you and he's obsessed with you and he's not gonna stop the work that he started in you. Come on, give God some praise. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. You're home. Ain't no lion gonna get to you. They ain't gonna be, come on. Come on, there's no bears going to get to you. Come on, there's no, come on, there, come on, there, there ain't, come on, there ain't no, they ain't, come on, there ain't no dogs get to you, no hyenas get, ain't nobody, no weapon formed against you or prosper because the one that's with you is for you. And when I'm for you, I'll protect you, I'll take you, I'm going to take you to green pastures, I'm going to take you to places of rest and provision. God, God is good. All he wants to do is shepherd you. And he says, once he finds the sheep, there's a big party that happens because there's more celebration than when a sinner repents and comes to God and when a lost person comes back home. There's one thing that happens in heaven that only causes a party. There's a big party that breaks out when a sinner comes back home that was lost. I'm letting you know. Some of you guys right now are going to cause a party in heaven because God's speaking to you and you're going to say, yes, God, I'm ready to go with you. I'm ready to repent of my sins. I'm tired of living like I'm living. And this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a party that breaks out in heaven. God celebrates when you finally come back home. And we got to learn how to celebrate people. Man, come on. Because now this obsession to reach the lost, he's passed on to us. And these poor people are out there, broken, hurting. I know they're a little bucky. I know they got a little attitude, but they ain't saved. And they seem to stray away. But it's okay. We got enough love to handle all their buckiness. We got enough love to handle their attitude. We got enough love when they try to get them. We bring them back home and we follow up on them and we invite them to our house. Understand they're a work in progress, but God started to work and he's going to continue through us. But let's celebrate them. This ain't even a full sheep. This is a little baby sheep. This thing getting heavy. And some of you guys, I'm telling you, the assignment you have is pretty heavy because some of your family right now, they're not easy to reach, but God's going to use it to reach them. So let's not, come on, don't get tired of well-doing. If God didn't give up on you, don't you give up on them. And every little progress that they make, go ahead and celebrate them. Go ahead, baby. You got to, I, I pass it on to her. I pass her on, I pass this sheep on to her DG. <laughs> now the small group's going to handle this sheep. We got them saved. Now it's time for her to feed them and take care of them. Let's get God some praise because God's obsessed with you. Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss in just a second. No one leave. Is God good? This story ends wonderfully. He finds that sheep. And then there's a party of joy. My sheep that was lost is back home. And it doesn't make sense for him to leave the 99 to get one. But that's how our God is. You're important to him. He does not write you off. Even though you ran away, it wasn't you, him, you. But I'll tell you this. If you're a Christian, you ran away from the Lord. I know this. Fear came back in. Discouragement came back in. Depression came back in. The cycle of the abuse and bad relationships came back in. And you're sitting there, hurting, broken, lonely, in dark places, feeling like there's nobody there to protect you, be there for you. And while you're there, God is searching for you. And that's why everywhere you go, someone starts telling you about Jesus. You go to work and all of a sudden someone says, hey, Know Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not right with him right now, though. You know, tell him, come back. Let's start over on Easter. That's your job. We're there to let them know that there's a shepherd looking for them. And he's going to use every one of us. He says, compel them to come. You know what that means? Don't give up on them. And I'll even say this. Don't take no for an answer. You keep on asking, you keep on praying for them, you keep on sharing your faith, you keep on sharing your testimony. You say, when are you going to stop? Never. I'm never going to stop. 
because I love you. I'm never going to stop. Come on, are you that persistent person that God has put in people's lives, in your family? Stop fighting with the people you're supposed to reach. Forgive them. The reason they do what they do, they know, don't, don't know better. Stop taking it personal. Just forgive them, let them go, and use that bridge to bring them back to Jesus. Yeah. I, I want to end it with this. I don't know if I, I didn't share this story, right? At work, I was at work, and one of the things that I, I when I was at work, I, I outworked everybody. I was an example in my work ethic. And I won people's respect by my lifestyle. And I started winning people over for Jesus at my work. Because I'm obsessed with pleasing God and reaching souls. So I just share my faith and let God do the rest. But I'm also an example in my workplace. So one of the guys I led to the Lord, he gave his life to Jesus. His name was Robert Wallace. And I remember when Robert Wallace gave his life to the Lord, I started doing Bible studies with him. We didn't just get him saved. I'd put him on my shoulders, and he'd come over to my house, and I'd drive, I'd drive back and forth. As a matter of fact, he moved in with us, and I began to disciple him. So when I began to disciple and invest in him, he started reading the Bible and reading a little material. And one day, he took a little, a little flyer about God and the Scripture, and he was in the bathroom, read it, and left it in the bathroom. The owner walks in. The bathroom with that flyer in there and when he saw the flyer the owner took it and it was a Friday morning I remember we had 30 salespeople in a in a room for our training he comes in red in the face angry he says and this is what he said he, he drunk dr stood on the table screaming and he says Marco I didn't even bring the flower it was Robert Wallace <laughs> keep this stuff out of the dealership in front of everybody. And he goes, promise me we're done with this. I don't ever want to bring it up again. You hear me? Do you promise me? And everybody's silent, screaming at the top of his lungs. And, and then I said, I can't promise you that. I love you too much to promise you that. Now, I want you to understand, I didn't bring the flyer, and I wasn't going to do the coward thing. I said, I didn't bring the frost flyer. It was Robert. <laughs> now, I was going to take the flyer. I know Robert wouldn't have brought no flyer if it wasn't for me. I'm glad I was the one that took it. And when I said that, the whole dealership started clapping. Like, that was a good one, Marco. That was a good one. And by the time he was done... He couldn't say nothing anymore. And this is what he says. Why don't you have those answers for your customers? But this is what happened when he got in trouble. And he was at the end of his rope because sin will take you to the end of your rope. There was nobody he knew that could pray with him and help him. That guy that was screaming at me one day began to call on me. He says, Marco, I'm struggling. I'm hurting. And I want you to pray when he started crying because there's somebody right now that obsessed with reaching the lost and is willing to take him on some persecution, some hurt. But I'm not going to stop reaching you. I love you. That's what it's all about. We love you. I'm going to give you an opportunity. We're going to be, we're here at the most important decision of your life. Jesus is meeting you where you're at. And if you, if you don't allow him to save you, you remain in the lost category. You remain empty. You remain vulnerable. And the Bible says the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And you get to the point where he's destroying your life because you're cooperating with him. Today's your day to finally say, nah, things are going to change. I got the power of choice, and I don't need to continue serving the devil, doing things my way. I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the fear. I'm tired of being lost. I'm tired of I, not knowing if I die today, where I'd go. And that's the question. If today were your last day on earth, do you know where you spend eternity? Because I understand there is heaven, but there is a real hell. The misery begins here. And I've heard people say, well, this life is hell. No, no. When you live apart from God, this is what happens. Your life becomes a living hell. Because you're starting to like become more of like where you're going. But it's not the final destination. 
But if you give your life to Jesus, your life can become a living heaven. Then you can start getting the peace of God in your life, the joy of God in your life, the hope of God in your life, because now you're in a new direction. So I'm going to count to three today. He said, Pastor, I need, to re- I need to recommit my life to God. I walked away, and I want to say yes to the shepherd. I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. I want eternal life. I want to be forgiven. I want to live a life of purpose. That's your choice. One, when I say three, or I'm backslid, I need to come back home. Two, he said, Pastor, I don't know if I'm right. I want to get right with God. You know how you come? You come the way you are right now. The moment of decision is right now. No one's going to get saved without a decision. Jesus made a decision to die for you. And publicly, come on, publicly be humiliated for you. He loves you. Today's your day to say yes. Don't worry about who's on the right or the left. You're going to make a decision. One day you're going to stand before God. This is your day to give your life to Jesus. One, raise your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus. You want forgiveness. Two, three, raise your hands all over this building. So that's me. I want a new beginning. I see the hand. I see the hand. Come on. I see the hand. Proud of you. I see the hand. I see those hands over there. Come on. Anybody way in the back. Come on. This is your moment. Don't put it off. I see that hand. Anybody, I see that hand over there. I'm proud of you. God bless you. What we're going to do. You're going to, I want you to do this. Those that raise their hands, will you do me one more big favor? I want you to leave your seat. I want to pray with you. Give me the honor and privilege of praying with you. I want you to leave your seat and come up here. This is what you're saying. I'm leaving my old life in those seats. Don't let pride get in the way. Come on. Give your life to Jesus. Don't serve pride. Give your life to Jesus. If you raise your hand, come forward. Ask your neighbor if you want to go up there. I'll go up there with you. Ask your neighbor if you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on. There's people right now. You didn't raise your hand, but you need to be up here. You need to come with your pain. You need to come with your hurt. You need a new beginning. You need a new start. God is after you. He's obsessed with you. He wants to help you. Online. Come on. Stand up right where you're at. Stop your car. Give your life to Jesus. This is your moment. Come on. Let's give the hand. Come on. Let's celebrate. Come on. Someone's son. Someone's daughter. Come on. Someone's mama. Someone's auntie. Someone's cousin. They're giving their lives to Jesus. Come on. Jesus has been after them for years. Come on, church. Let's celebrate like heaven celebrates. If they have a party there, let's have a party here. Awesome. What's your name? Victoria. God bless you, Victoria. What's your name? Gabby. God bless you, Gabby. Love you. Love you. Young man, what's your name? Elu's here. Come on, let's give. He's giving her life to Jesus. Victoria's giving. Gabby's giving her life to Jesus. What's your name? Marcos? That's easy. And Marco. Marcos. That's good. Come on, who else? What's your name? Carlos is giving his life to Jesus. Come on, Carlos, we love you. You matter to God, okay? I'm going to give one more call. There's somebody still out there. You need to come up here. There's a fight within your soul right now. And God's not giving up on you. I'm telling you. I'll, God is saying, I'll stop this whole service because I came for you today. And I'm telling you something. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Today's your day of salvation. We've seen a lot of people leave this place. And, and, and they have a week left, a few days left. It's over. And they go on into eternity. Don't be that person that rejected Jesus on your last opportunity. Come on. If you're here and you say, man, I feel like God's talking to me. Come on. Come on. You come up. Come on. They're coming. I told you. There's people that God said, I'm not giving up on you. I'm proud of you guys. It takes real men to serve God. Okay. I'm telling you, you guys don't know the destruction that the devil had planned for every one of you in here. You didn't even know that your next chapter could have been your worst chapter and could have been your last chapter. But God says, no, I'm bringing you here because I love you. And someone invited you because God was reaching out to you through them. God's going to use you to reach out to. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, they're still coming. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. He's just going to God his partner. Come on. He said, no, come on, we're all serving God.
Okay. Now, understand this. God is sold out on you. This is not a relationship like the relationship in the world. Well, let's see how we get along. Well, they, God says, I'm all in. I love you. I'll never leave you. I'll never turn my back. I promise you that. I'm always going to be for you. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. And he said, trust me. You follow me. And you acknowledge me in all of your ways. I will straighten everything out. And you'll start living the victorious life I've called you to live. Come on, those demons that are tormenting you, that don't allow you to sleep, that make you want to die, that make you want to give up, that, that are tormenting your thoughts. In the name of Jesus, they're leaving today because the peace, the prince of peace is coming in. You don't need the alcohol anymore. You don't need the weed anymore. Come on, there's a savior that wants a savior right now. Make you whole. Okay. Are you ready to live for Jesus? There's a commitment you're making today. Follow Jesus for the rest of your life. There's going to be some practical things. You get 168 hours or something like that a week. Give yourself at least two hours a week. Come back to church every Sunday. I don't care how your Saturday was. Just start over on Sunday. You come here. And I guarantee, and give us a year of your life. I guarantee if you give us a year of life and start disciplining yourself to start doing what you need to do and start continue making the right choices, you'll never recognize yourself a year from now. We got some classes for you to join. We're going to help you get baptized. And this is what I promise you. God's never going to leave you. And until the day I die, I'm going to be here too. You're going to have some stability in your life. Come on. You're going to finally have a family that's never going to leave you. We're going to grow together, okay? I'm going to, we're going to be here. This is going to be your stable place. And today you've decided to become a follower of Jesus Christ and also a disciple. That means I'm following Jesus. My mission is to become like him. I'm going to start learning his word. I'm going to start growing. And I'm going to start sharing my faith with others, okay? You guys ready? Let's pray. Bow your heads. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you did not give up on me. Thank you for being obsessed with me, for dying on the cross, suffering for all the wrong I've done. Every sin that I've committed, you paid the price for it so I can be forgiven. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Set me free. Make me new. Transform my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Today, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior. I receive the free gift of eternal life and devil I command you now get out of my life Jesus is my Lord I receive your peace Lord I receive your love Lord I receive your freedom Lord I have a new life I'm saved I'm born again in Jesus name I pray amen let's give the Lord a hand come on church this is the big Sunday come on Come on, the revival's already beginning. We didn't wait for Easter.